A Hair Raising Experience by Lily Pinwielder. Read by Michelle. Summary The hand makes contact, all five fingers pressing onto Suyu's face, and the villain lets out a long sigh as nothing happens. You really are, Chu coolly raises her head. His words are low, almost a mumble for his ears alone, but for once, it isn't Izuku's feet that are moving without him thinking. Otherwise known as the time Izuku befriended a villain by rambling about their favorite hero. The villain's hand reaches for Asui. Call me Sue! And Izuku's mind conjures up an image of his classmate disintegrating to nothing just like what happened to the skin of Izawa sensei's elbow. The hand makes contact, all five fingers pressing into Suyu's face, and the villain lets out a long sigh as nothing happens. You really are too cool, eraser head. His words are low, almost a mumble, meant for his ears alone, but for once it isn't Izuku's feet that are moving without him thinking. I know, right? Even knowing that he's outnumbered against this many villains, and how unsuited his fighting style and quirk are for this kind of drawn-out battle, he still didn't hesitate to jump right in so we could escape. It's honestly a testament to your training that you even were able to land a hit on him. Not that I'm trying to imply anything about your skill level, I'm just genuinely impressed is all. Did you time it for when he would blink? That would honestly make more sense than simply rushing at him without any protective gear or weapons, though you clearly rely on your quirk as a weapon. Still, it isn't often that a leader jumps into the fray himself and even manages to land a devastating blow without taking any damage of his own. That's pretty amazing if you think about it, especially since you can't be much older than we are, and you're already worthy of leading such a huge undertaking. Most villains that hang back when the battle starts are doing it because their forces are just cannon fodder to hide the fact that they themselves are powerless, but you were watching for an opening the whole time, right? Have you seen a Razorhead in action before, or was this the first time? It's as Izuku pauses his rambling for a response that his brain catches up to his mouth and he startles in place, expecting the villain to hit him. Said villain merely tilts his head at Izuku in contemplation while stepping back from us. Sue, she stumbles back, falling into the water with a muted splash, but the villain pays her no mind as he continues to stare down at Izuku. First time, he finally says. Eraserhead isn't like All Might or Endeavor. There isn't any footage of him floating around. Yeah! Izuku bursts out, semi-hysterically. I know, Eraserhead marks so high in the unofficial underground ratings. There's a very quiet, the what? From off to the side, but Izuku forges on. But there is literally no merch or photographs available or anything. I didn't even realize it was him when class started. I only put the pieces together when he erased my quirk. Which, granted in hindsight, is a bit of a giveaway. The villain snorts and Izuku cuts off once more, bracing for a hit. Nothing comes, so Izuku slowly continues talking. It's actually really impressive that you were able to figure out his quirk specifics in a single battle. I thought for sure that since you mentioned being here to kill All Might and that you knew he was supposed to be here, that you also must have done research on as a eraser head before coming. Especially since you have the, um, weapon to kill All Might, so all the masses of troops must have been brought to deal with eraser head, right? Because a Razorhead would still have to use his quirk regardless, since he couldn't take any chances based on looks alone, and trying to erase a quirk and having that be ineffective might throw him off a bit. And his fighting style really isn't suited. Even without specific footage, it's not hard to determine that, of course. Even I knew that when he was preparing to attack you guys. That's part of what makes him so amazing though, right? That he knew he might not make it, and that someone might be able to figure out his quirk and take him down, but he did it anyway to protect us. The villain looks away, though Izuku can swear his face is less pale than it was before. It's almost tinged pink in places, though it's hard to tell for sure what with the hand pressed over his face. Yeah, that was the plan. Couldn't have Eraserhead backing up All Might since Sensei wasn't sure how Eraser would affect the Nomu. The NPCs were to distract him so that I'd have time to figure out his quirk before removing him from play. Wow! Izuku manages compartmentalizing the tidbits of info and the casual talk of murder for later. Your sensei must think really highly of you to leave an experienced pro like your Razorhead to you. The villain preens at the praise, even as he dimmers. It wasn't even that difficult. He mumbles and Lizuku is stuck on the thought that perhaps this boy? Man? Person isn't used to receiving compliments. Eraserhead's hair lifts when he is using his quirk. The goggles serve to hide where exactly he's looking, but even from a distance I was able to count how long his hair was floating versus how long it stayed down to calculate the cooldown on the quirk. The villain turns suddenly to sneer at Aizawa sensei, whose bloody face has been turned towards them to watch the entire exchange. You hear that, Eraserhead? You need a haircut. He can't, though, Izuku mumbles. 
flushing at the sudden attention as both pairs of red eyes snapped to him. Um, that is, a razor head operates primarily at night and tends to focus on the less well-developed areas of town. Sticking out certain situations that he knows about in advance can give him time to set up nicely and wait, but observing from rooftops every time would be too disastrous a pattern to cultivate, since the thugs and baddies would simply post a lookout up there, or be sure to keep checking the roofs, or simply keep their voices down and implement a silent mode of communication which wouldn't allow a racer head to overhear. I've actually got a theory, but mind you, since I've only pieced together that my shabby teacher was a razor head a little over a week ago, I haven't really had time to fact check or anything, but I think a razor head's costume is purposely tailored to look shabby since that coupled with his long dark hair lets him stumble around deserted streets and collapse against alley dumpsters that he knows will be busy later, and no one looks at him twice because they think he's homeless. The villain breathes a slightly awed tone. Of course, that's why no one ever sees him coming. He's been there the whole time. Exactly, Izuku crows, slightly enthused at having someone agree with one of his theories instead of calling him stupid and yelling at him to shut up. And the hair isn't a problem then, since it's so dark it wouldn't be visible. Why does it float, though? A secondary mutation offshoot that developed to keep his line of sight clear? Izuku gasps. That makes so much sense! Especially when you take into account that the float effect isn't just on his hair, it's also on the scarf around his neck. That's why even though it's been around as a capture weapon for literal years, most heroes don't bother with it because they need to exert way more pressure to fling it around as well as constantly ensuring they have an end handy while they pray it doesn't all get tangled. Eraserhead, on the other hand, only has to activate his quirk for a second, even without a target in mind, and the weapon unravels itself a bit and hovers at the ready. That's such a great theory, though it's a spontaneous evolution to keep his line of sight clear. I kept thinking it was some kind of psionic wave that emitted from his eyes that affected his immediate surroundings. Shigaraki Tomura did not wish to interrupt, but I must tell you that a student... Not now, Kurigiri. The villains... Shigaraki's hand lifts, and Izuku can see Aizawa-sensei activate his quirk from here. But Shigaraki doesn't reach for him, doesn't even seem to notice his favorite hero's reaction as he scratches lightly at his neck. We could both be right, he finally muses. The waves affecting his immediate surroundings are an evolution to keep his line of sight clear. He whirls around and crouches to Aizawa-sensei's eye level. Well, Eraserhead, did your hair always float, or was that something that came later? Aizawa-sensei blinks, even as blood continues to drip down his face from where the Nomu smashed it into the ground. He looks dumbfounded. Confused, maybe? Not at the question, but at the fact Shigaraki is asking. Or maybe it's that he hasn't killed Izuku yet. Either way, it seems to take an inordinate amount of time for his mouth to slowly start to open. There's an explosion of sound from the entrance, and then All Might is there, and all is glory. Shigaraki sighs in obvious exasperation. <sighs> now you show up. I'm not feeling it anymore. Nomu! A huge black mass finally releases Aizawa-sensei's head and looks up. Cover our retreat. Nomu screeches and leaps to attack as soon as All Might is in range. Kurogiri opens the portal and Shigaraki starts to step through. This was fun, player two. We'll have to co-op again soon. And then he's gone. A first aid kit sailing through the portal to land at Izuku's feet. Hello. I don't know if you can tell, but this is my first attempt at doing a pod fig. If you want, tell me what you think in the comments. Was it good? Was it bad? Should I try and continue? Or should I just give up? I might attempt to do the second part of this series, see where it goes from there.